Hi, I'm Thomas Campbell. And I'm Peter Campbell. And, and we're, we're Eight Muffins. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves, so we're going to start from the beginning of the story. Here is the story. Uh, we were born as non-identical twins in the small town of St. Abdon, Minnesota. Uh, we never knew our father because he was arrested and put in jail for a bank robbery. And our cousin was in the state penitentiary for bootlegging. Our mother was abducted by aliens in a cornfield. And we were raised by a pack of wolves somewhere along the Canadian border. Our older brother is a salamander. <laughs> After realizing we were loosely related to the Kennedys, and the DEA uh, was on our trail for our moonshine operation, we uh, fled to Maine on a gypsy caravan drawn by a herd of alpaca. Uh, just after crossing the Vermont border, we ran out of food. We remember our subjugate wolf mother saying, I'll pack your food. But it turns out she said, I'll pack a food for, for the, the alpacas. alpacas. So we ate the alpaca food. The alpaca died. And I stepped on our older brother. So here we are. None of that was true. Uh, we made the whole thing up. We like to tell a fake story because we find the fake story to be a lot more interesting than our actual story. Uh, as entertainers, we lie. So we're professional liars. See, uh, as, uh, as storytellers, I mean, as filmmakers, we are storytellers. See, for the TEDx event, we were asked to tell our life story. And the problem we had with that is that we don't think we have much of a life story. See, we didn't come from rags to riches. We don't really have tales of retribution or revolution. In fact, we had a pretty run-of-the-mill Cape Elizabeth High School experience. We had the most run-of-the-mill Cape Elizabeth High School experience, as you would say. Like, in high school, I did track and field, and I came in second to last place every time. <laughs> That's even worse than last place. It is worse than last place. It means I'm not even the best at being the worst. That's the most <laughs> who-cares place there is. You guys all remember Chiwanki, right? Well, when I went to Chiwanki, it rained for the entire week, and I got sick on the second day, and every pair of socks I had was soaking wet. I had two friends, and I'm pretty sure one of them didn't like me. <laughs> I spent an entire semester in PE adventure class creating an oar, and I put the wrong finishing oil on it, and it gave me a hand rash. We had a pretty mediocre Cape experience, actually, and our academics were even more mediocre. C's across the board. I got a couple of D's. I actually may have failed a class. <laughs> See, I, I remember I wrote a 10-page essay about media consolidation, and I still don't know what media consolidation is, and me and the teacher marked it up. He marked it with a red pen, went from the front to back. When he finished, he put the paper down, and he laughed at me, and he said, Tommy, you're a riot. <laughs> And my fourth grade teacher pinned me as a slacker because I told her to shut up. <laughs> See, in high school, we felt a pressure that we had to accomplish work based on other people's expectations, or at least at the time, that's just how it felt to us. So we diverted our attention to other areas of school, namely the arts, uh, specifically music and theater. And outside of school, we pursued our hobby of filmmaking. And in college, everything, everything seemed to change. Uh, it's a freer environment in college. We took the initiative to want to succeed for ourselves. It's just, it's different from high school. Yeah, there's an understanding with your professor that you don't have to go to class, but if you don't, you'll fail. <laughs> I remember specifically after graduating high school, between the summer, in the summer between graduation and my freshman year of college, I made the conscious decision to get straight A's in my uh, major, which I decided to be music. And uh, everything just became easier for us. And our filmmaking really improved as a result. Yeah, as did our grades. I just graduated from the University of Southern Maine magna cum laude this past spring. And I currently hold a 3.95 GPA at USM. Um, but don't get us wrong, we're not knocking academics. No, if you're the top of your class, that's great. If you're not like we weren't, don't get discouraged. Find something you're passionate about, pursue it, and put time and effort into it. And you're probably not going to love your product when you first finish it. It's probably not going to be your best work. But our first 20 films stink. But, you know? but that's okay, because we're sticking with it, and now we're producing works that we're proud of. 
For instance, we have five award-winning films now. Starting in 2012, our film Halloween Special won six awards at the Film Chowda Student Festival, including Best Film. In 2013, we won first place for the Portland 48-Hour Film Festival with our film Croc Cry, and it was screened internationally at Filmapalooza in New Orleans this past March. And at this 48-Hour Film Festival this year in August, our film Subcontactors also won five awards. We also won first place for two other film festivals this past summer. And we're doing professional work as well. Tom and I have designed the soundscape for a number of commercials, including companies such as the Maine Technology Institute and Akamai, which is the leading content delivery network in the world. And we're busy doing a bunch of other work too. But after, <laughs> not so fast. But after all of this, we're still broke. My car's busted and I can't afford to fix it. I have negative $180 in my bank account. <laughs> that means I have to raise $180 to be broke. <laughs> but, that's, but that's okay, Peter. Sound key too, please. But that's okay. <laughs> because we're busy doing work that we love doing. We're taking the initiative upon ourselves to want to be successful for our own good, and we're proud. Yeah, we're proud we're... of it. We're proud! Peter, please, relax. Okay. We're not just making movies for festivals, we're making the movie of our life. And you know who's the hero of our movie? Us? That's right. It is, yeah. But who's the hero of your movie? Us? No. no. It's you. It's you. That's like right. you, Chaz. Great speech. Who's the hero of your movie? It's you. That's right. You. You two in the second row there. I see. Who's the hero of your movie? Is it your turtle? No. It's you. You in the back with a bowl cut. I used to have a bowl cut too. <laughs> Who's the hero of your movie? Everyone on this you. side of the room. You're uh, the hero of your movie. Everyone I want to see. Side of the room. Uh, I want to see a show of hands. Who of you believes you are the hero of your movie? I want to see, I those, see hands those hands. Uh, are you the hero of your movie? Yeah. Now put those hands, hands together. together give yourself a nice round, round of applause, applause for being the hero uh, of your movie. Uh, uh. Thanks. We've, We've been, been great. great. No, you, you thought you were. We, we're not done. We're not done yet. Just wait. Hang on a second. Uh. Okay, we're gonna show a movie. Um, you've seen some of our more recent films, Subcontactors, some of you have seen Craw Croy, Pinch was at Nickelodeon, some of you have seen that. We're gonna show a movie you probably haven't seen. This is the very first movie we've submitted to a festival and it's the first movie that got us some amount of attention from the Portland film scene. Uh, we shot it in 2011. Uh, we originally shot it as a drama and we hated it. So we re-edited it and shot some new material and we turned it into a comedy. So, without further ado, here is Ye Apprentice. Enjoy. Come in. Joseph Carroll. Nice to meet you, Hector McDonald. So you're my new apprentice? Yes, sir. How old are you? I'm 16. And you? 21. So where are your parents? They're on their way to Ipswich. Selling? Oh, no. Business. Hmm. Speaking of, what do you do, Mr. Carroll? I'm a municipal worker. Hmm. Clerical? Yeah. So is this your first job? No, sir. Okay. Well, I'm gonna show you around the house. Show you around your work area. No, sir. What? OK, 
Okay, um, where am I gonna be staying? Uh, well... I hope this won't be a problem, but you'll be staying in the barn. No, sir! What do you do for work, Mr. Carroll? Municipal worker? Clerical? Yeah. Maybe I brought something, sir. Oh wow. Yeah. It's a kite. Yeah. Did you make it? Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I have to say, um... I uh, don't believe him! What? What? Sorry, sir. No, I don't want to see your kite. Put your kite down. What do you do for work? Work, work, work. Mr. Carroll. What do you do for work, Mr. Carroll? Mun 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 municipal clerical? Worker. Work. Work. No, 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 sir. Work, 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 work. The pump, 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 the pole, the pump, the pole. For work. For work. No, 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 no. Okay, how did you just do the. Yep. Uh, I'm a witch. Oh. Oh.